Okay, welcome to uh, section 4.3, part 1. Here we're going to focus on looking at how to find local max and min of a function. And we're also going to look at how f prime affects the graph f. And then in part 2, we're going to look at how to find the inflection points of a function and discuss concavity. And we'll look at how um, f double prime affects the graph of f. Okay, let's start off by looking at this example here. Given a function, and the question is, on what intervals is f increasing and decreasing? And also, where is f prime greater than zero and f prime less than zero? Notice, uh, we're really asking the same question. Because f is increasing from negative four to four, right? x goes from negative four to four, the function is increasing. Isn't it true the slopes of the tangent lines at any point will be positive in that region? So uh, the answer is, f is increasing from negative four to four, and f prime is greater than zero from negative four to four. For the other part of the question, isn't it true um, f is going to be decreasing from negative infinity to four, and also it's going to be decreasing from four to infinity, and notice that at any point in that region, the slopes of the tangent lines are less than zero. So f is decreasing from negative infinity to negative four and four to infinity, and f prime is less than zero um, from negative infinity to negative four and from four to infinity. What, what we're talking about here is what's called the increasing-decreasing test. If you want to know when a function is increasing, look at where the derivative is greater than zero. If you want to know where a function is decreasing, look where the uh, derivative is less than zero. By the way, we're, we're going to prove this in class using the mean value theorem. Okay, so in this example we have a polynomial function, and the question is where is this function increasing and decreasing? It turns out to be a very convenient way. So in other words, where, where is the derivative greater than zero? Where is the derivative less than zero? And a convenient way of answering that question is to look where the derivative equals zero, which are called the critical numbers. That's right. The way you, if, if we find the critical numbers, that, 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 that's going to help us find where f prime is greater than zero, where f prime is less than zero. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero, uh, factor it in this case, and you get two answers, x equals one third or x equals one. Now, a nice way to determine where f prime is greater than zero or where f prime is less than zero is to make what's called a sign chart for f, f prime. Th to do that, all we have to do is um, plot the critical numbers on the x-axis right here. And then all we, and we, what we want to do is test to see uh, in each of these regions, these three re regions, the sign of f prime. And the way you do that is just to pick any test point to the left of one-third, first of all, and plug that into f prime and see if it's positive or not. Well, let's pick zero. That's a good point to pick. If you plug zero in to each of these, you get negative one times negative one, which is positive one. So f prime is positive there. Now what's a good point to pick in this region? How about two thirds? If you plug two thirds into the first one, I believe you get one. Uh, if you plug two thirds in here, you get negative one third. So positive times a negative is negative. Pick a point in this region. Like how about a hundred? If you plug 100 in here, this is positive, this is positive, so f prime is positive. So we can answer the, the question. Since f prime is positive from negative infinity to one-third and from one to infinity, therefore f is increasing from negative infinity to one-third and from one to infinity. And since uh, f prime is less than zero from one-third to one, therefore f is decreasing from one-third to one. Now, if you look at the graph of f of x, you see we've actually, we actually have a local max here at one-third. And you should have noticed that because, look folks, the derivative is positive, the derivative is negative, that means f is increasing, now f is decreasing, and it's a critical number. So you have to have a local max here. And furthermore, you have a local min here because f is decreasing here and f is increasing here. Decreasing to increasing means a local, local min. Now that's precisely what the first derivative test says. It says if you have a critical number, that's really important, it's at a crit critical number, and if f prime changes sign from positive to negative, you have a local max. That's what happened here, remember? And if you have a sign change from negative to positive, you have a local min. But it's possible to have no sign change at all. The classic example, of course, is, is, a, fun is a graph like y equals x cubed. f of x equals x cubed. The derivative could be positive. Then at, then at a certain point the derivative might be zero, but then if the derivative is positive again, you don't have a sign change. So you wouldn't say there's a local max or min here. By the way, this is important later, you could also have a sign change in f prime at a vertical asymptote. f of x equals one over x squared, for example. You see what's going on here? f prime is greater than zero, isn't it, to the left of zero? 
then if you go to the right of zero, f prime is less than zero. So we wouldn't call that a critical point, a critical number, and we certainly wouldn't call that a local max, but, w but when asking the question uh, w where f is increasing and decreasing, you have to consider vertical as asymptotes on your sign chart. We'll, we'll do one of those later. Let's do a few more first. Okay, so we got a polynomial function. Where is f increasing and decreasing and find the local extrema of f? So we're going to go through that process. The same pro process is going to work on all these. We find the critical numbers. Those are the places where the derivative is zero or undefined that are in the domain of the function. The, der the derivative turns out to be 12x cubed plus 24x squared. Set it equal to zero. Factor it. You get this. Set each factor equal to zero. You get uh, zero and negative two. Now we're making a sign chart for f, f prime. You plot the critical numbers on the x-axis, negative 2 and 0. Now let's just pick a test point, like how about negative 3? Plug negative 3 in here, you get a positive, a negative, so the, so the derivative is negative. Plug a number like negative 1 in, here you get a positive, here you get 3, positive, so the derivative is positive there. How about a number to the right of 0, like 1? They're both positive, so the derivative is positive there also. So look at your sign chart. F is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2. F is increasing from negative two to zero and from zero to infinity and there's a local min at x equal ne negative two. Since you don't have a sign change at zero, there's no local maximum in there. Okay, let's see if we've got time for two more here. Okay, in this problem, uh, same idea. We have f, f of theta equals theta minus two sine theta on the interval zero to two pi. Where is, uh, uh, where is this function increasing and decreasing and find the local max and min? Same process. You find the critical numbers of f we're looking at the ones that are in the, the interval, of course. The, take the derivative, you get uh, 1 minus 2 cosine theta. Set it equal to 0, and you get cosine theta equals 1 half. Now, uh, look, look at the unit circle there for a second. The cosine theta equals 1 half, there is um, at pi over 3 and also at 5 pi over 3. Those are the two places on the unit circle. Make, make a sign chart for those, and you, we're plugging in some test values into the, uh, the derivative here. Between zero and pi over three, let's pick, an, let's pick a theta value very close to zero. Let's say it's almost zero, but just a little bit bigger. That means cosine theta is almost one. So one minus two is negative, so the derivative is going to be ne negative there. What's the number to pick in here? How about pi is a good one. Cosine of pi is negative one, so this becomes three. It's positive. Same idea on this last interval. Well, let's pick theta close to two pi, just a little bit before two pi. This is going to be close to... Um, one, so this thing is going to be close to neg negative one. Anyway, so the derivative is negative there. So, so what is our answer? Um, the derivative is negative means f is decreasing from zero to pi over three, and from phi pi over three to two pi. f is increasing from pi over three to phi pi over three. Now, how about local max and min? Since the derivative changes from uh, positive to negative at phi pi over three, you have a local max at, at x equal phi pi over three. And since the derivative changes from negative to positive, at pi over 3, you have a local min there. Okay, let's do one more here. Okay, this last problem is a uh, rational function. Remember what I said earlier, you, you have to consider the vertical asymptotes in your sign chart um, because you can, have a, you can have a sign change in f, f prime there, although it wouldn't be a local max or min. All right, so, so when you take the derivative, uh, set, set the derivative equal to 0 or undefined, you use the quotient rule in this case, and let's see, you simplify the top and you factor out the top and you can cancel one of the x minus twos. So th this is what f prime becomes. This equals zero when x equals zero and the bottom is zero when x is two. Again, that's not a critical number because it's not in the domain of the function, right? But we are going to still consider it in our sign chart. So here we go. We put zero when we put two on our sign chart. Pick a number less than zero. How about negative one? The top is positive, the bottom's negative, uh, so the whole thing's negative. Pick a point like x equal 1. If x is 1, the top is uh, negative, and the bottom is negative also. So negative over negative is positive. Let's pick a point like 100 over here. 100, this would be negative, this would be positive, so the whole thing's neg negative. So here's your sign chart. So we, we can conclude that f is increasing on 0 to 2, f is decreasing from negative infinity to 0, and 2 to infinity, and we have a local min at x equals 0. No, we don't. We do not have a local max here because remember, there's a vertical asymptote here. No local max at two. All right, we'll see you in class.